Hello everyone. Welcome to Chemazon Complete Chemistry. So our today's topic is electrolytic cell. So in this video we are going to learn what are the basic components of an electrolytic cell and we will also see the signs of the electrodes that is anode and cathode why the signs are opposite in case of electrolytic cell and galvanic cell and also we will see how do we write down the basic reactions of an electrolytic cell okay so the first thing that we have to understand are the basic components of an electrolytic cell so as we had discussed earlier there is an electrode where oxidation takes place which is nothing but called as anode and there is another electrode where reduction takes place that is called as cathode so these anode and cathode that is the electrodes are connected by a, an external source of energy or a battery it can be a battery which is nothing but series of cells or we can also use a single cell so and there is an electrolytic solution or the reaction mixture that reaction has to happen so this is the basic construction of an electrolytic cell and you can see that the anode is positive and the cathode is negative that is the signs of the electrode let us see once more so signs of the electrodes that is anode and cathode so in electrolytic cell that we are studying as we saw right now that is the sign of the anode is positive and sign of the cathode is negative but if we see for the galvanic cell it is completely opposite that is sign of the anode is negative and cathode is positive so why this is happening so the first part that is where why anode is positive and cathode is negative we will learn in this video and why anode is negative and cathode is positive in a galvanic cell we will see later so but one very important thing to note is that which i mentioned earlier also that is the oxidation reaction always takes place at the anode and reduction reaction always takes place at the cathode irrespective of type of cell whether it is galvanic or electrolytic always oxidation will take place at the anode and reduction will take place at the cathode okay now let us see why anode is positive and why cathode is negative so you can see this is a battery and every battery we know that it has a positive terminal and a negative terminal so it is very simple the electrode that is connected to the positive terminal of the battery will be positive in charge and the electrode that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery will be negative that is the reason why the anode which is connected to the positive terminal of the battery is positive and cathode which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is negative and accordingly if the anode is positively charged in the solutions negatively charged ions that is oppositely charged species attract each other so negatively charged ions would move towards a positively charged electrode that is anode so n ions would move towards the anode and the positively charged cathode positively charged cations would move towards a negatively charged cathode so this is a very basic principle that is opposite charges attract so this is the reason why anode is positive and cathode is negative now let us understand this more uh, in a much better manner with the help of an example so electrolysis of molten nacl what do we mean by molten nacl it is very simple in case of solid sodium chloride which is nothing but a crystal lattice there is no movement of ions that can conduct electricity so the molten state or the sodium chloride solid sodium chloride when we melt it we heat it and melt it we get molten nacl and this molten nacl when we do we can do the electrolysis of molten nacl and we can so there are two reactions basically possible in 
case of a molten NaCl. That is, first is the something happens to the chlorine species. That is, either chlorine will get reduced or chlorine will get oxidized. And another reaction is for the sodium. Whether sodium ion will get reduced or it will get oxidized. So now we have to decide which electrode or which ion would undergo oxidation and which would undergo reduction. So now let us see the standard reduction potential for both these reactions or both these half cells. So for chlorine, the standard reduction potential is plus 1.36 and for sodium, the standard reduction potential is minus 2.71. And in the last video, if you remember, I had told you that the half cell for which the standard reduction potential value is higher would undergo reduction and the standard reduction potential and the half cell whose standard reduction potential is lower would undergo oxidation. Okay. So now let us see what exactly happens in this cell. So here you can see that chlorine that is the chloride ion is getting oxidized but if you see here again the standard reduction potential of chlorine is higher so ideally it should have gone reduct undergone reduction but it is actually undergoing oxidation similarly if you see for sodium its oxid its standard reduction potential value is lower so it should have undergone oxidation but it is undergoing reduction. Now, why this is happening? So, that is the basic principle of an electrolytic cell. So, this reactions that is happening, that is chlorine getting oxidized and sodium getting reduced, is non-spontaneous. That is, this reaction at normal conditions, it won't happen. Or it is a reaction that would not happen on its own. That is what is the meaning of a non-spontaneous reaction. So, we are passing an external source of energy that is nothing but the electricity by battery or by means of a cell and we are forcing this non-spontaneous reaction to occur. That is why chlorine, chloride ion is getting oxidized instead of getting reduced. And similarly, sodium, normally it would lose an electron and would love to remain in Na plus uh, in sodium ion state since its octet is complete and it would be more stable. But since we are providing an external source of energy and we are forcing a non-spontaneous reaction to take place. So now let us see the half cell reaction. So what are the components of any electrolytic cell. So first step is to write down the half cell reactions for both that is the anode and the cathode. So the first step that is nothing but at the anode chloride ion is getting converted to chlorine gas and losing one electron. As you can see here chlorine gas is getting liberated. Next is we have to write down the half cell for the reaction at the cathode that is nothing but the reduction reaction. So here sodium is getting reduced that is nothing but gain of electrons to form sodium metal that is sodium in solid state means sodium metal and the final step is to write down the overall reaction of the uh, that is the net cell reaction. So what happens in the net cell reaction? This electron and this electron gets cancelled. Okay. And this is the overall cell reaction of this electrolysis of molten NaCl. Now, let us see uh, animation to understand this in a much better manner. So, you can see that chloride ions are getting attracted towards positively charged anode. And the chlorine gas is liberated as you can see here. And if you see at this side at the cathode, the sodium ions are getting reduced to sodium metal and that is why the weight or mass of this electrode at the, that is nothing but the cathode would increase as sodium is continuously deposited on the cathode. So here we come to the end of today's video. In the coming video, we will see 
more interesting examples of electrolytic cells and further we will also see for galvanic cell how to write down the cell representation and what exactly is a galvanic cell and we will also see how to determine the standard reduction potential values that we had seen in the last video that is nothing but the values that we saw in the emf series thank you so much please do like share and subscribe to our channel please don't forget to press the bell icon to getting for getting latest updates and notifications thank you